Okay, so for anyone of you who's seen me posting a lot of weird stuff on, on Twitter, so I, I always had uh, one of my old favorite tools. Um, so I thought I was going to talk a little about it, like how you can build your own uh, cheap spectralizer. Not 6 gigahertz, it looks really cool. It's in here. Uh, and we're using the Monsterat AP, if anybody knows the real name of it, the PCB of a 3702. Uh, I just took it apart uh, just to see if we can mount this in a different way, uh, because I know many like Rutgers, Juniper people do not want to have a Cisco AP on their side when they do some spectrum analysis. So if we hide it in some other box that they don't see the Cisco logo, maybe they will use it. Uh, Jim said he would. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we need one thread, uh, or a 3702 at least one tool. So we need one Nick Turner to make the 3D. Uh, I need a DC to DC converter, barrel plug to USB-C. And we end up, <laughs> we end up with this gadget. So it's six hours of uh, battery time. And it works on Mac, even though I have my cool Windows T-shirt and sweater on me. Uh, we're using cross over here. Yeah, so I had to pull in Jim Florick here as well. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, uh, like we all know the Cisco Spectrum Expert, right? Uh, FFT analyzer, really high detail. You record it uh, to a file. Um, it's a little bit slow, one sweep a second, but comparing to other USB spectrum analyzers, there, there are also one sweep a second, right? A um, little bit of the, that here, but I'm going to show you. Let's show you that's how uh, that uh, a live demo, and that it actually works. How can I just exit the presentation here? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Maybe I need to remove the USB or something. Okay, I'm going to remove the USB a little bit. Can I do that, Kit? Yeah, because my PC crashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, do you have a Mac? <laughs> it crashed completely. The AP didn't. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it looks worse on the back side. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 it's not this, it's... Uh, oh, he's completely frozen. Yeah, Windows, uh, yeah. Do this. Okay. Set the interface to... Yeah, but I wanted the, um, the yeah. key, will I? Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, when I fix my computer, yeah. that, uh, that broke. But he can uh, show you a little bit of how he made it, and I can show the demo. Uh, yeah, right do you want to... Re well, if you reboot... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> reboot. <laughs> uh, so, really quickly, it is another orange and grey box, pri primarily because this is the filament that was loaded. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, if we go back in time momentarily, I, I realise now that this is. A fair while ago, but in 2015, I presented at WLPC about how to use a Cisco AP in Spectrum Connect mode to perform spectrum analysis, and that involved putting all the components into a bag with a battery pack and a PoE injector. So this is a modern reimagining of this idea. Uh, it does work on a Mac. This bit's not live, but just to show you that the software can run uh, using crossover. It can probably also work using other wine uh, solutions, but crossover made it pretty, pretty seamless. Uh, so this time round, it is, it's, a, it, it's a stripped down AP. So if we take, if we take these bits out, uh, and we'll also take out the cage. So th this is our this is my simplified PCBs, yeah, having been removed from, from the AP. Uh, and then 
if we place them inside a case, the case is made up of three parts, a, a lower piece, middle piece, and top one. And then we end up with something like this. And maybe if there is interest in this as a, as a, as a concept, uh, we, could, we, we could probably put all the components within one housing, but honestly, this was just the idea of how do I strap all of the pieces together and get them as small as possible. So uh, we're using the a USB, USB PD battery pack, a, triggers, a, a cable that will take uh, that'll trigger 12 volts uh, on the USB PD. That'll go into a voltage converter, step that up to 48 volts. Then we can go into the DC port uh, on the PCB. That keeps our ethernet port nice and free. And then we set up a static IP address on the access point, static IP address on the laptop on, on the USB interface, USB-C to ethernet probably. And then we can get our connection there. Uh, incredibly oversized, uh, eyelets on top. Uh, not quite sure if they, they need to be this this hardcore. Uh, <laughs> uh, and at the moment, it's a cage uh, to hold those pieces all together. But like I say, I think it could be this could, this could look a lot less scary if we hid all of those wound up cables. And you're up and running again. Beautiful. Yes, well, that, so then let me just do my let me just do my. Uh, because I made these views, so let's, let's just, just quickly go through these. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so let's go back to the... <laughs> so that is the reason why I said... That is the reason why I said you need one nick. Um, so... <laughs> The cool thing is, right, really, like, we all know this tool, right? Uh, usually, if I put my phone here, I do this typical interference classification. Uh, probably, uh, if I'm looking at the right thing, 2.4, uh, so I can see if I can connect the typical to uh, 2.4, connect sensor, uh, BGA, and the right, this one is right. Having the correct tool there. Yeah, even though. So, uh, you see, you see the, the typical quality is good. Six, I think a six and a half hour uptime with it. And the, the thing that we always miss from other type of, type of spectrum lasers, right, is the typical to duplicate uh, all, the, uh, all the views that we have. I did record, I think, two hours or something uh, during uh, our other deep dive. So if I do really want to look at more of the 2.4, you just change it here like we used to. So now I'm looking at those channels as well. Maybe need another one of that one. Uh, moving that one here. And then we have this one for the other kinds of bands there. And the thing is that we're always missing in other types also, that we can change the color scale here so you don't have to make it be a pure uh, green, so you can like see very narrow detected signals. The funny thing, yes, it's old, deprecated in 2007. It's the best one who can see the radar at my home of all my spectrum lasers, <laughs> um, except the Ronia one, of course, uh, because it's a do add the FFT duty cycle uh, during dwell that collects 5,000 FFT points during dwell as samples the IQ like the Taiki one does. So that was just the little thing that we wanted to do. Well, yes, it works on Mac, and fun little project. Uh, I'm using a laptop antenna here to get the 5 dBi more gain, uh, so then it, uh, yeah, looks good. We've seen this before, right? It's just in a different packet. <laughs> yeah, right now I'm using just the A port on the antenna, uh, but I think I'm going to solder on an uh, RPSMA connector so we can just connect some different antennas to it and just have it on the side here so you connect antennas here so we can do some spectrum hunting like this. That was it. Have in 3D printing, yeah. <laughs>